Welcome to MSPTTA number 33, part two. Yeah, we already did data modeling for a slowly changing dimension with Power Query and a standard pivot table. But in the comments below video 33, Bill Sizzes posted an alternative solution. Now, in last video, we produced this report, and we had teams with employees. And if the employee did not have a sale, the employee name did not show up. Well, with Bill Sizzes' solution, we'll be able to show all the team members for each team, even when they didn't have sales. Now, in next video, I'll show you how to accomplish this report using Power Pivot in the data model. But in this video, we're going to get this report with the standard pivot table. Now, the fundamental problem is that we have an employee dimension with a team attribute. And as time goes on, January and then February and March, the employees can change team. So somehow we need to get this team key over into this table. Well, that's at least how we did it last video. This video, we're going to create a very large dimension table. And instead of having a range of dates, we'll have an individual date, meaning an individual row for each one of the dates. Then we can do a merge, bring the sales over to this table. And then from this newly constructed Power Query table, we can build our report. Now, I've already brought these two tables into Power Query. I'm going to double click D Team. This opens up the Power Query window. Over here on the left, we see our two queries. I'm going to rename this F Employee Team Sales and Enter. Now, I need to select End Date, Start Date using my Control key, Team and Team key. Right click, Unpivot Other Columns. Right click Attribute, Remove. Now we want to rename this employee. But if we come back to Unpivot Other Columns, this function right here gave it the name value. So I'm going to double click, and we'll rename it here, Employee, and Enter. Now when we come down to this step, we have the correct name. Now our goal is to have a column. And in each cell, I need a list of all the days from the start to the end. Now we're going to use list syntax to create that array of dates. But we want to first convert both of these columns. Right click, down to Change Type. And I want Data Type Whole Number. That way we can do our list syntax to go from this number all the way to this number. And the reason we're going to do that is because we will expand the column. And this record right here will be repeated for each one of the days in that range. So now we come up to Add Column, Custom Column. We'll call this Date. And to show you how list syntax work, we could say, hey, curly bracket, that means we're about to create a list, 1. And if we use the syntax dot, dot, 5, or any ending number, close curly bracket, that's the syntax to create the numbers from 1 to 5. In fact, we could click OK, and we see we have exactly what we want, a list in each cell with the numbers 1 to 5. We'll click the gear icon, highlight number 1, double click Start Date, highlight 5, double click End Date. And now we'll get a list of values from whatever the start to the end date is. Click OK. And there we go. For each row, we'll have whatever the list is from start to end. Now, we don't need these two columns. I'm going to hold Control, click both, right click, remove. Now, when we expand, we'll repeat that, in this case, 31 times for the month of January. Click the Expand. And we want to expand to new rows. Now we can come up to Data Type, change it to Date. And now we have a unique list of every possible team, employee, and date. Now we have the ability to merge, because we have every possibility over here that can pick up whatever possibility between date and employee we might have over here. So back over here, now we're going to go to Home, Merge Queries. And the order in which we select these is important. I'm going to select Date, holding Control, Employee. One, two. Now I go to the Fact Table, or the old Fact Table. Date, hold Control, and Employee. One, two. Now we're going to say Left Outer, 
which means in this dimension table, it's really going to be our new fact table, there will be lots of records that do not have any corresponding value. A null value will show up. And so when we make a pivot table, that will force the name to automatically appear. Now when I try to click OK, look at that, it's polite. I cannot match date with date time. I wish I could save this and come back, but I'm going to click Cancel. Luckily, it was polite. We'll change date time to data type date. Now when I redo this step, 1, 2, 1, 2, there it is. When I click OK, I get a table. Some of them will be null. Some of them will have a sales value. I'm going to expand, uncheck everything, and we only want sales. Click OK. Null and numbers. That's our fact table that we can build our pivot table from. Now I'm going to close and load. It loads back to connection only. Right click, load to pivot table report. Make sure, let's see, F13, click OK. Now we're going to drag team key, employee, date to automatically group sales. Right click, number formatting. Whatever number formatting you want. And there we go. This awesome trick by Bill Sizzes gets us our employees in every row. Now, I didn't test this on a big data set, but my guess is if we had big data, we probably would want to use the solution we have in the next video using the data model. But luckily, for a small data set like that, our awesome online teammate Bill Sizzes gave us a cool Power Query trick. All right, be sure to check out these other videos about slowly changing dimensions.